Welcome to the New Heights Show on Education. I'm Pamela Clark, founder and director of the New Heights Educational Group. And I'm here with David Smith, the founder of Silicon Valley High School, who has helped us get these podcasts produced and delivered to you. Yes, Pamela, when we saw the great things that you and your army of volunteers were achieving at New Heights, we wanted to get involved. We're happy to work with you to leverage the internet and make quality education accessible and affordable to everyone, everywhere. Thank you, David. We appreciate Silicon Valley High School helping us to get these podcasts out to the hundreds of thousands of listeners from all over the world. So I hope you enjoy the show. In this week's episode, we will discuss education reform on mission. Hello, everyone. This is Danielle Washington coming to you live from Ms. Buffy Williams' office. <laughs> Just sitting around thinking about life and trying to become better people tonight, so check us out. Welcome back. You're on the air with Buffy Williams, and you have been listening to the New Heights Show on Education. We have been discussing the show's purpose on mission. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Buffy Williams, your host, and you're listening to the New Heights Educational Group, the New Heights Show on Education. Tonight's topic is expanding financial literacy and how it will impact our global economic literacy in the K-12 through area. A recap on last week's show, we talked about how our education impacts the performance in core educational programs and how uh, a student's academic performance can be enhanced. On tonight's episode, we explore the trend of expanding financial literacy in K-12. through Let us hear your thoughts. Call us at 917 948-7542 948-7542 or put your comments in the chat or tag us using the hashtag NHEG or as always you can post your comments on Twitter at Buffy underscore Awaken or on Spreaker, Instagram or YouTube and I'd like to um, thank Kane for always posting on my YouTube channel um, how much they enjoy the show so I just want to say a, a personal thank you. Remember that my fellow host with New Heights, Erica Hansen, shows airs Thursdays at 2 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. On tonight's episode, I do have a quote for you from Henry David Thoreau. And it reads, That man is richest, whose pleasures are cheapest. And as we go into our topic of uh, expanding financial literacy in K through 12, I know that um, in the education system, there are a number of ways in which uh, schools have been trying to integrate financial literacy within the classroom. I personally have work with a program um, through a civic organization that I belong to. And each year we provide financial literacy to a low income first generation program. And through that, one of the things we use uh, a number of different financial resources, uh, financial institutional resources, I should say, um, uh, the best consumer solutions, uh, which talks about credit scores, we also use as uh, one of our resources the National Endowment for Financial Education, uh, which provides financial workshops uh, for high school students. And then we use the high school um, financial planning, which gives uh, teachers res- additional resources to be able to teach financial literacy uh, and the Federal Trade Commission, which offers a plethora of free information uh, and information on identity theft. And generally what we do is we gather all of that information, we study it, and we present it to them, letting them know that those are our resources and where we receive the information from. But they also provide literature. And so 
with that, we would uh, create bags for them and also for their parents because we don't want to take for granted that parents have been educated on financial literacy um, as well. And then as a part of being a director for a federal TRIO program, one of the components within the Upward Bound program who directly uh, works with high school students and the Educational Talent Search, which works with junior high through high school, and of course with the Student Support Services program once they came to college, we work with financial literacy. And part of that um, component we work through some of these structures as well in providing this information from financial institutions and having speakers come in from those financial institutions to present on saving, investing, you know, whatever the topic may have been. And so we found that, you know, with that component, it was um, a really great way to bridge the gap with the students. And so, and one of the things I can remember uh, myself and my staff working with the students on, because especially when you're dealing with a population of students who may not have financial literacy in their home and they may not have come up with the concept of, you know, what um, what investing is, what insurance is, what are the stock markets, um, what is the credit score, um, what does that really mean for my future? Um, and how is that going to benefit me? So one of the things that we did was, you know, when students receive loan money or they receive grant aid money or grant money, we sat down with them and we had a budgeting workshop. So number one, they could understand, um, you know, with dollar, real dollars and real cents, how this is going to apply to their life how they could budget it over um, an extended period of time, not just for the semester, but maybe two or three months beyond the semester, because if that's the only resource that they have, then they need to um, plan out their living expenses um, for at least, at the least, an extra two months, maybe even three. And so... Uh, with that, we explain to them, you know, your credit score, what your credit score is made up of, um, what percentage, you know, if you pay something late, what percentage that would be. And so these are some of the resources that we receive from all of those places. And our, our resources for tonight's show is the Lumina Foundation. And it's at Lumina.org and also the Booking Institute. And the things that I've just um, referenced, of course, you can find on ed.gov under the Federal TRIO programs and them providing financial literacy. Um, but it's up to the particular program as to how they choose to implement that program. And so when you think about financial literacy and financial 101, just the basics of finance and economics, in the K through 12 area, one of the things you want to look at is the life situation of the student. And you also have economic development centers that are in your local areas that also can provide a, a large range of information and recommendations on improving youth literacy. But in the literature, um, one of the things that um, I found interesting was that the current um, global economic crisis as it relates to financial um, education and the importance of financial literacy for young people has recently garnered a lot more awareness. Uh, and there's a rapidly changing economic climate as it relates to young people and their understanding of money and money management. And so at least uh, 43 of our current, um, 43 of our states uh, include personal finance in the areas uh, of K through 12 standards. So schools are having this component added to their curriculum. And then also the National Council uh, of State Legislators passed um, a literacy um, legislation in 2014 that looks at ways in which school districts can actually add uh, general financial literacy to their 
actual courses. And then uh, New York State has a summer youth program that actually helps them develop their financial literacy within a particular program. And so when we look at the challenges that educators are finding in providing this financial literacy, one of the things that the research states is that, you know, um, there is no single accepted certification for teachers who are teaching financial literacy. And so it's up to the school districts to actually provide that information or utilize a, a teacher's transcript to see if they've actually taken the financial course and if they're comfortable um, in teaching or discussing financial education within the classroom. And so you can imagine that that ranges from a, a wide range of teachers who specialize in, you know, anywhere from mathematics to social studies to vocational training um, for these teachers who understand and are able to teach financial um, education topics to um, to the students. And so um, when we look at all of the things that teachers are, um, again, charged with having to provide to our students, and then we have our principals who are, you know, in a sense charged with, you know, providing this within the K through 12 area. And then you have to also keep in mind that when you're in the hiring process, if you could have someone who has some background in economics or um, mathematics and can teach these um, type things to the students at a, uh, at an easier pace, I would say, um, and able for the students to be able to actually retain this information and utilize it in a practical way. Um, because again, going back to the workshop that uh, some of my um, uh, civic group members actually participated in, one of the aspects of that and also within the TRIO program was that it was a practical application. So the students actually had to work with the numbers themselves and show me, um, you know, if you utilize this percentage of your income, you know, how, what percentage of your income should you not go over as far as housing is concerned or transportation is concerned in order to have a balanced budget. And so you want it in practical terms. Um, there was a little, uh, in th throughout the presentation, we gave them a payday and we took out taxes and we gave them a career at the beginning with a set salary. We let them know if they had any children. So they had to add certain expenses for the children and things like that. And so each time they got received a payday, not only were they excited about getting paid, but then they were discouraged because they had to pay the actual taxes and whatever it took to take, um, take care of that child. And also there were life situations that were embedded within that that they would also have things that would come up, like maybe their sister's car broke down and their sister didn't have enough money or their sister needed help with rent or brother needed help with rent. And so they utilize some of their funds to do that. And also keeping in mind emergency funds. So all of those things were embedded within that presentation. But we're looking at teachers being able to teach personal finance. And so... Um, the literature also says that 37% of K through 12 teachers actually took a personal finance course, and that's a very low percentage. Um, but 80% of the states um, have some form of finance education standard and guideline embedded within their curriculum. So we're talking uh, about expanding financial literacy in the K through 12 area. And we're going to take a pause right here. And I hope that you join us after the break. Right now, you might be struggling through your classes or even failing them. You might be worried that you may not finish high school. There might have even been a thought that you may not be smart enough. Well, the New Heights Educational Group begs to differ. We not only think you are smart enough, but with our help, you will complete your high school diploma. The New Heights Educational Group strives to improve your academic success through its tutoring services. To learn more, please visit newheightseducation.org and contact us. New